Hey everyone, Uncle Jesse here. This is the Easy Thread K5 Mini 3D printer for kids. That's right, it's a 3D printer for kids. It has a one touch button interface there that you can load up files in the back or a file in the back, press that one button and let it start printing. Well, that's what it's supposed to do in theory. Today, we're gonna to be talking about this printer and whether or not you should consider buying it for one of your kiddos or if you're just interested in a really cute Printer. So as you can see here from just looking at the printer on my desk, it has a really cute stylistic design that you typically don't see with any other 3D printers that are out there. Uh, it also is incorporated in some very bright LED lights that you can actually control with some buttons on the back. So if you wanted to change the pattern or the colors, you can press a button right here. Or if you just wanted to turn them off, which I'll probably do for the remainder of this video so it's not so jarring while you're watching the video, yet you have that ability to control that as well. But the idea is that this is supposed to be a really simplified version of a typical 3D printer that you might see here on my channel or in other people's channels here on the YouTubes. And it's something that's designed for kids. It's fully enclosed, so they're not gonna get their hands in there while it's printing and hurt themselves. It's also really affordable. I picked this up off of Amazon for $130. Thank you to all of my patrons that are helping fund me buy just random stuff that I can show off here on the channel. So thank you. If you're interested in more about my Patreon, you'll find links down below. And thank you to all of the support for all my kind and lovely Patreon supporters. Easy Thread did not send this to me. As I mentioned, I bought this for myself. I was just really interested in finding a 3D printer that I could use because my nine-year-old was actually interested in 3D printing. And so I wanted to find a printer that he might be able to use and that we might be able to set up in his bedroom. Unfortunately, this ain't it. In theory, this seems like it's a great idea. It's again, really simple design and interface on the back of the printer. You have the ability to load in a micro SD card where you can load in your G code files that you typically slice in something like Cura. So you can download files off of Thingiverse or wherever you wanna download them from, slice them in Cura, then load them up in here one at a time because there's no interface to the printer and then run off and print your actual file. Uh, some of the challenges that come with this are that uh, on the back here, it has a feed and retract mechanism so that you can load filament in and remove the filament. However, getting it through the hole here and into the extruder opening is difficult just, just to do that basic functionality there. It also, I mean, one positive thing to this is that it does heat up really quickly. It takes about 30 seconds to a minute for that to heat up and then it starts retracting or uh, pulling in your actual filament so that it will feed through the extruder. One thing that caught my eye obviously was the design of the printer. It's, the guy, it's got that really nice appeal to it. it. Kind of looks like Baymax or an Among Us character. Just some cool looking anime figure that young kids would be interested in. And my son even thought it was pretty cool looking. As I mentioned before, it does have that protective casing around the entire printer to help prevent a little kid's hands from going in and touching anything while it's printing. Even if it is printing and they removed the cover here, that's right, you just unsnap this from the front of the machine. There is an actual little piece of rubber around the nozzle of the extruder to help prevent a kid from touching the nozzle as it's gonna be you know, a few hundred degrees depending on what you're printing with and burning their fingertips. Another really great thing about this is that the build plate came pre-leveled, so you didn't have to level anything unlike a lot of other 3D printers. It's also a magnetic, flexible build plate. So here I've 3D printed a low polygon Mario from Flowlistic, and it just flexes right off of the build plate there, and prints do a really good job of sticking to this build plate material, and then peeling off as you just flex it from uh, the build plate here. And then when you want to put it back in, you just slide it back in on that magnet. The magnet is not very strong at all. And in fact, I did have one of my prints just come completely removed flexible plate directly off of the build plate on the machine. And there's no heated build plate as well. So it's one less thing that you kind of have to worry about. And so far I had a decent amount of prints sticking to that build plate, at least when it was printing. 
It did also come with a really nice printed manual that helps getting started with the machine, how to get it set up, set up and up and running. On the SD card, there were videos, software that you could run off and install for the machine, slicer profiles for Cura, which didn't work for me in my version of Cura. They have their own slicer that they've built, but even they recommend using Cura as a more advanced option. And if you couldn't tell, that was pretty much all of the positives that I had to say about this machine. The next half of this video is just going to be me bagging on this machine. <laughs> I don't do that a lot, but before I get into it, I would just preface this by saying, if you're interested in a 3D printer for kids, I haven't found a great solution just yet for my son that I feel comfortable with him having up and running in his room. This is for sure not it. I'm consider myself pretty experienced with working with 3D printers and this thing it was a huge pain in the rear end to work with. So the first thing I want to talk about is when it's printing it is really loud. The motors in here just make a crazy amount of noise. No way I would ever want this in one of my kids rooms. I wasn't expecting it to be super silent but I wasn't expecting it to be as loud as the MakerBot Mini which is the first 3D printer that I've ever had which was just stupidly loud to begin with. The other thing is is that when it's moving any of its axes here on the printer, it just there's no end stops. So it just grinds away as it's whether it's homing or whatever it's doing, it's just going to grind until it hits an eventual point where it tells itself I'm assuming in the software to hey, you've tried moving that direction for 10 seconds. That's far enough. Stop and let's go to the other direction. It's the oddest thing to me. Very very odd. I briefly mentioned the removable panels here. So again, this helps keep the kids' fingers from touching any of the prints while it's actively going here. So it's not exactly the easiest thing to put on and to take off. There are little notches here for you to grip and pull it off and you can take the covers off the front as well as the back here. Uh, but I have a feeling that over time, these little plastic hinges are just gonna snap off and you're gonna be left with just an open and exposed front end. There's also no fan on the hot end there. So I wouldn't be expecting any sort of great looking prints. And speaking of great looking prints, uh, I mean, the, the only good print that I actually got off of this was that initial test print. Everything else that I've gotten off of that were lots and lots and lots of f print fails and clogs. I'll talk about that here in a second. So I printed one of these flexible uh, airplanes that are supposed to have the wings that you can ex open and close. Yeah, there was no way that that's happening and one of the wings just didn't print at all. I then tried to print a low poly Mario here. Uh, this is the original one and there you can see where the filament it just got clogged in the extruder and then that was a fun experience trying to get that unclogged. Uh, then I tried to print the same Mario file again. Uh, it clogged multiple times and I think I, I ended up trying to unclog it like three or four times here until I ended up getting this final print. So to start a print, you load the SD card in the back and then you press the button on the front and it starts printing. Well, that's what you think is it's going to do. But when you actually do that, you can't tell if it's actually doing anything at all. <laughs> it's so odd. There's no, I mean, I get the idea. It's, it's a one button interface. They've tried to dumb this down as much as they can. Kudos, that's a, it's, it's a, you know, a great idea to run with. However, there should be some sort of indicator that it's actually doing something. So you'll load a file in, hit the button, and then obviously it needs to heat up the extruder. And so you're gonna be waiting there for one to two minutes and then it will start grinding its gears and then starting the printing process. But the problem was I had no idea if it was doing anything at all. So I kept unplugging, replugging it in. Oh, that's the other thing. There's no on off switch. It's just plug it in, unplug it on the back of the machine. And to speak about the clogged extruder there. So this was a nightmare to remove this panel here so that I could actually try to clear the clog. So obviously you're going to want to initially here, if it, if it clogs, try to retract the filament back out. Well, that wasn't happening. It was completely stuck inside there. So uh, I ended up repositioning this as best as I could. And it came with this super tiny screwdriver, very, very cute screwdriver. However, it did not fit the screw 
at all that is on the extruder mount there. So thankfully I had one that worked, was able to get the screws off and get the cover off and then remove some other screws and then finally clear the filament out of there, then get everything reassembled and printing again only for it to clog again multiple times. There is no way, there is no way any parent that is picking up, oh, this is a great thing. My kid's really interested in 3D printing. Let me pick this up for them. It's gonna be able to figure that out. It was hard enough for me to be able to get in there and then reassemble everything. And it's still kind of janky looking of how it's all reassembled to get in there and clear clogs. If you're interested in 3D printing, you are going to run into filament jams. It's gonna clog up, the plastic's gonna get stuck in there and you're gonna have to do some amount of maintenance work to clear that out. There's no way to do a cold pull on this. That's where you heat it up, jam some filament in, let it cool off, and then yank the filament out and it'll help clear out any clogs. You can't do that with this machine. All in all, would I recommend this 3D printer for any parent out there? No, definitely not. Please avoid this at all costs. If you're interested in a really nice night light, then maybe go for it. Or if you're interested in this, just the shell of the unit and tinkering with it, then maybe, yeah, that maybe is, is for you. Uh, the other thing I did neglected to mention is the build volume is 80 by 80 by 100. So it's pretty small, but it was large enough to print these little figures, which is the sort of thing that my, my kid's interested in printing at this point in time. So nothing super large, but even something like an Ender 3 or an Elgu Neptune 2 might be a better place to start if your kids are interested in 3D printing. Even though it doesn't have an enclosure on it, you could probably teach them to keep their hands off of it or not go near it unless you're around with them to help supervise, you're probably gonna have a much, much, much better experience with that over something like this. Well, with that said, I wanted to say thank you so much for watching. Let me know what you thought about the Easy Thread RK5 Mini 3D printer. <laughs> yeah, I'll be boxing this back up and sending it back to Amazon at this point. Something. Actually, maybe you guys have an idea of what I could use this for if I decide to keep it. Let, let me know in the comments if you have any suggestions on what I could potentially do with this, other than a nightlight for my kid's room. Hey, thanks so much for watching, you guys, and I'll see you next time. Bye now. Actually, hold on. <laughs> so I just tried to get my LED lights behind me to do similar effects to that, and I think I just killed the whole panel behind me on my wall. That'll be fun to replace this weekend.